Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're gonna to be doing some quick tips, so let's get started. Okay, so this quick tip is gonna be how to make a rock. Very exciting, but fundamental, because hey, you're gonna run into this a lot when you're creating stuff in Blender, you're gonna want rocks, so let's do one. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete everything in my scene, because why not? And I'm gonna start off with a cube. Do you see what I did there? I just I deleted everything and then I, I made a cube. That's advanced blendering, that's the first step. Okay, there's a lot of different ways to make rock. A lot of it depends on actually having a really good shader that can emulate rock. Um, but you can also use uh, deformers and modifiers to create actual displacement in your object to create a rocky surface. So we're just gonna make a really simple one right now. I'm gonna start out with this cube. You could technically use anything from like a sphere, you know, really you could use anything. You could create a mesh landscape and apply these effects to it. But let's just start with this. I'm gonna create a, first a subdivision surface and that's just gonna increase the number of geometry that I have, the amount of faces in my geometry. And um, I'll just bring that up a little bit, maybe maybe one more, I'll go to three. Now make sure you note, I'm, I'm increasing both of these because this is the one that uh, the number of subdivisions it will apply when you hit render. This is the number of subdivision it applies when you're looking at it in your viewport. Now the purpose of that is because sometimes you wanna have a ton of subdivisions when you render, but you don't wanna slow your computer down while you're working. So you keep this number low, you keep this number high. Just don't get confused about that. Sometimes you can get them flipped and then you render and it doesn't look as good and that's usually why. All right, the next thing I wanna add on here is a displacement modifier. Now this is a good one for just creating some basic geometric displacement to create a rock. So I'm gonna click uh, new here. This is gonna create a new texture. Now don't get confused, textures are different from materials. It's sort of a different world, a different landscape of, of um, object that you can use in Blender. So the texture right here, the only way you can edit textures is to go to the texture tab. You can click on this button, it'll take you right to it, or you can just click here and that takes you to it as well. Now by default, it's gonna uh, go to image or movie texture, but we actually wanna use something, one of these noise patterns. Um, and I'm just gonna start off with, I'll just do clouds, we'll try that. You can see automatically, it's what it's doing is it's taking the black and white values and it's distorting our geometry based on these values. So white, it's pushing it out, black, it's pulling it in. So it looks kind of messy, because of course we don't have a lot of geometry. Now if I increase my subdivisions here in my uh, subdivision surface, you can see it starts to smooth out a bit more and you can see a bit better what the actual shape of this noise looks like. Now we can change things here, like the strength, like I can pull that strength down, and you can see automatically you start getting a really nice rocky surface. Now, this is a very dense mesh. I've gone up to six subdivisions. It's probably not the best idea, because if you want a lot of these, it's just gonna slow your computer down. So you wanna keep this number as low as possible while still maintaining the realism that you want, depending on how close your camera is to the object. So if this is a really small pebble, I actually would wanna keep this pretty small and depend more on the material to carry the look. But um, for our example today, we're just gonna be using, you know, maybe a subdivision surface of four. Now you can see it, it's got this flat faceted look to it where every face is shaded a little bit differently. So you see the square shapes of all the different faces, the polygon faces. And these are the normals. And uh, I can explain, I've explained normals before in other videos. I can give you a link to that in the description or uh, I'll put it in the, I'll put it in a, as a card. But basically every, Face, face is in different directions, so it's, re it's reflecting light a little bit differently. But if you wanna average out the way Blender makes all these faces look, what you can do is you can shade smooth. And what that means is basically it's gonna average out the, the direction of these faces so that it renders it more in a smooth way. You don't get these like hard lines. So if you just right click on the object, you get the drop down menu and we can click shade smooth. And that's gonna shade it, shade it smooth. That's kind of counterintuitive because you know, rock's not smooth, but because we've got all this displacement and stuff, you can see it still looks, you know, pretty coarse, pretty rough. All right, now let's create a material that will uh, help to complement our overall rock look. So I'm gonna create a light so that we can see uh, in our scene. I'll just rotate it, bring it off to the side. Sunlight doesn't matter where it's positioned in 3D space, but I just moved it off to the side just so these lines weren't in the way. I'm also gonna brighten up my world a little bit um, under the world tab. And this just adds light all around the object. Um, and let's see, I might create one more lamp. So I'll just click the sun and hit shift D to duplicate it. And again, it doesn't matter where it's positioned. See how it doesn't change the light. Sun lamps don't matter. It's just direction is the only thing that matters with them because it, it's basically treating it as if it was a sun that's far away. And I'm just gonna turn the strength of this one 
Actually, I'll turn my world down a little bit. That looks a bit better. And uh, with this one, I'm also going to take my lamp and I'm gonna turn up my angle. Angle allows light to wrap around. You see how the shadows get harsher or not so harsh? I'm just gonna turn that up a little bit and turn the light up some. All right, now I'm gonna select my object and I'm gonna just split my view over here, just like this. And I'm gonna go right up here and I'm gonna go to my shader editor. All right, so to split your view, just bring your mouse pointer down into the corner and you're gonna get this little like crosshatch thing, and that, that's how you split. You click and drag. You can also get rid of them by click and dragging back. You get this arrow and it'll get rid of the, the window. So I'm gonna hit escape just to cancel that. Now I'm gonna come down my material tab, I'm gonna click new, and we're gonna create a new material for this rock. Okay, now, just like with our texture, we're using a noise pattern, which is generated basically with a math equation to create this infinite pattern of noise. We're gonna use something just like that to create the texture and the color of our rock. So I'm gonna, in my shader editor, which is a material which is different from a texture, only in the sense that they're, they're sort of different environments in Blender. They're doing the same things, so they're not different in that sense, but just, just bear that in mind. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Shift A, and I'm gonna add in a texture, and we're gonna go for a, we could really go for all kinds of things. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try Musgrave first. Let's just try Musgrave. Musgrave gives us options. Noise gives us good options. Veroni gives us options. All these will give us slightly different looks because they're all generating noise patterns. They're just all a little different because they're using different, different equations to generate the noise. So they're worth experimenting with. Just grab them, drop them. I recommend dropping them straight into the emission and that will allow you to see them just as they are um, with no lighting, no anything because emission is basically a, a material property that emits light. So we're causing this Musgrave texture to emit light to our scene. That's why we don't see the effect of our lights anymore. It's because this thing is now its own light, sort of. It's the basic gist of it. Okay, so with this, I'm gonna take this guy and we could change its scale to make it bigger or smaller. As you can see, it's giving us this kind of rocky pattern. Musgrave gives you a, a, a couple of nice little features though. One of them is this uh, dimension and detail. So I could turn my detail up and you can see we start getting a little bit finer patterns. We can turn down our dimension, which doesn't necessarily make sense. Turning something down makes detail go up, but just go with it. Um, Lucernity as well, if you turn that up, that's gonna give you other, other looks. You don't have to necessarily understand what's going on with the numbers, but it's more about just watching the image and seeing what it looks like. That's, that's really what it's all about. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, and I'm gonna get a color ramp just type that into the search field. And I'm just gonna drop it in there and it'll, if you, when the, the line highlights, that's when you can let go of your, your node and it will actually um, just drop into place. Now I can actually expand this thing a little bit more. You can see we get a bit more control. There we go. So I'm just gonna drop my dimension right down, something quite small. Okay, this is looking pretty cool. Now I'm gonna send this into my base color. And now I'm gonna pick some rock colors, right? So instead of white and black, I'll go for like a brown, maybe a dark brown, and then I'll bring this off black. I'll bring this up to also kind of a brownish color, maybe, or maybe a bit more less saturated. Maybe we go for like a gray. That's probably a better idea. Let's go for like a gray color. There we go. Might try dropping my scale down. Just looking for a nice sweet spot. Now the next thing is, you see it looks very waxy and uh, kind of like a piece of chocolate, sort of. It's got this kind of sheen to it. It's because we don't have any bump to it. We don't have any um, texture on this material. So we need to create a bump node and put it into the normal. So I'm gonna create a bump node right here. And um, I could bring this one straight into it, um, but it's probably better for me to use just pure black and white values for a bump, because you just have a little bit more control. Because um, that's what bump's really looking at. So if I plug this in, it's not gonna see you know, sort of darkish brown and mid to light brown, what it's gonna see is uh, just sort of the grave scale value of these numbers, you know what I mean? So um, it uh, it just converts, it gets rid of the color information and just turns it into black and white. So to make it more extreme, I could have full black, full white, and I'll get the full value of, of what's possible in that bump node. So that's kind of what I mean when I say that. So if I create a new color ramp, it's gonna automatically be um, pure black, pure white, could bring that same height into here and I could bring this into the height of the normal. Not the strength, not the distance, the height. So it's how tall is it? This is the same concept as what's going on here with our texture. So the displacement node is looking at 
okay, what's the black values of this texture? What are the white values? And the white values, it pushes out, so that's how high it lets those vertices go in the geometry. It's the same here. This bump is gonna tell Blender to shade the object as if you know the white areas are high and the dark areas are low. So that's we put that into the height and not one of these other values. Now it will, this node converts it into a normal. Now remember what I said with normals, it's the direction each face is pointing, each polygon face. So this is going to basically simulate more geometry than what we really have. So it creates new normals within our normals uh, based on this height and depth value from this texture. Pretty complex, all these ideas, the way they stack together. But the more you experience it, the more you practice it, it'll make sense. So I plug this into the normal. And immediately, once that processes, you're gonna see we get these rough bits. Now I can turn my strength down some, and it looks pretty good until we get the kind of a right thing. Now, I've got these blank areas, right? And that's what, remember, we saw that with the Musgrave. We had these this black and white areas. So maybe a better, another texture might be a better option. So this is where you would begin to think as you're creating this, going, oh, maybe I wanna try something else. Now, we did see that if you take your dimension right down, it does start to fill out. So this can still give you what you want if you do it like this. We could change our scale to make these bigger. We could make them a lot smaller. Now sometimes what's really useful is when you actually combine nodes together to get really nice bump effects. So let's actually just try that. Let's grab one more. So let's grab a, uh, let's try a, a noise. So noise texture, I'll just show you. I'll just plug this one in and replace what we already have. And you can see the difference. Bring my noise down. So now you can see this is another noise pattern that gives me some cool options. So there you go. That looks pretty good actually. Now we can also affect some of the other properties depending on how you want your rock to look. Now actually the rock is going to be very rough so we want to turn our roughness up. Not all the way up but just a little bit. We can turn down our specular if we don't want it to be specky. You can make it kind of a metal rock if you bring the metallic up. Lots of cool options to really kind of creating a look, but mostly what you want to do with a rock is uh, turn down your specular, turn down your metallic, and turn your roughness right up. And that is going to create something that's uh, going to serve you well. That's a quick, simple way to think about how to make a rock using displacement, modifiers, and also using textures. Hope you found that really helpful, and I hope you use it to create some really amazing stuff. Thanks for watching. Woo!